YouTube, welcome back. Uh, today we're doing something that, uh, well, we're not, even though we're making the push on the race car and we've been making some really good progress on that. I'm not abandoning working on the wagon, especially when I'm uh, between needing to order and or go buy parts for making continued progress on that car. So last time, a uh, little update on where we're at with this. Last time this was on the channel, uh, I don't know, a week ago or something like that. I don't know. Whenever it was, we uh, we made the call to uh, try out the, the headers, the back order chassis headers, because dum dum forgot to uh, cancel that back order. And in hindsight, I'm glad I didn't because these headers fit really good. And I spent uh, about a week thinking about it and trying to decide on whether or not I wanted to run the fender wall headers or run the chassis headers. And I've made up my mind. I'm gonna run the chassis headers on the wagon as originally planned. Um, these headers fit perfect. I mean, they literally could not fit better on this car. They clear the steering, they clear the motor mounts. Uh, the only thing that they don't clear is the uh, the XL size oil filter that's down under there, which it's an extra large, it's a full deep truck filter. So I can still put a standard filter on there and they'll clear that just fine. And they damn near clear the XL filter. If you really wanted to run that with these headers, you could, um, you just have to ding the tube just a little bit, but I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm just gonna run a normal size, a standard height filter instead of the X XL filter. Um, so other than that, these headers, I mean, they fit great. They clear everything. The, it's just, you couldn't ask for a better fitting set of small block headers for a uh, Mustang II converted Chevy II. So again, those are a Speedway chassis header for a Chevy II and they're for the Speedway's G comp front end, which is very similar, but it is different. Um, but they fit freaking perfect on here uh, and you might wonder or you may have already assumed that we'll be moving the fender wall headers over on to the race car because that's what it was going to get all along i just didn't know uh they weren't on the purchase list yet for that car and now we won't have to purchase them because we've already got them so anyway moving forward what this does change with uh this setup is one as you are aware uh, the inner fenders were already cut for the fender wall headers. So yeah, about that. Fortunately, uh, I think what's probably going to happen here is this inner fender set's probably going to get donated over to the race car as well. And we'll end up getting another inner fender set for this car. Uh, not those same ones. Oh God, no, not those same ones because those were a nightmare to get to where they would bolt up. And in theory, they should bolt up on that car exactly the same because, uh, well, it's the same firewall, it's the same core support, and uh, frame rails are the same as they are on this car. So those should drop in over there without too much issue at all. Um, I'm not sure which inner fenders I will go with for this car. It's probably, probably gonna go with the Heights brand one, pay up for uh, less of a nightmare. Uh, we'll have to figure out the battery situation all over again, but I'm, I'm working on some ideas for that, ways to uh, do what I did before a little bit better. Anyway, what I'm gonna mess with today though is, you remember, remember this little guy from a couple videos ago? The, uh, the shift linkage, that there was no way that this was gonna work with the fender wall headers because of the orientation of the shift arm on the column and the clearance with the firewall. Well, we're gonna try and resolve that today. Um, now that we're running the, the chassis header, the shift arm orientation options have increased exponentially. So we're gonna see if we can't figure out if there's a way to clock that and position it so that this generic linkage kit can be fitted up in there. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to get, I don't know, I'm going to, I'm going to get the steering column out of the way and start looking at the geometry right there. But uh, I'm going to need to get a few tools out. So go ahead and give me a second to do that. Oh, hey, there's the pretty little lady. 
not she's not gonna be working on the cars with me today because uh she's headed off to uh meet up with her family to have some lunch that i am uh skipping out on lucky oh it's not that bad uh, but no i just i've got some work to do besides working on the car so uh i'm electing to not go to lunch food's overrated anyway let me get some tools out we'll get ready to go and uh you tell your fans what you're waiting for uh please everybody if we hit 5,000 subscribers cole is gonna put ac in the shop for me that's <laughs> There you go, 5,000 subscribers on the channel and she gets her AC. So go, if, if, if you like seeing her in the videos, you know, help us out. Anyway, I'm gonna get, uh, like I said, I'm gonna get some tools out and we'll get going. All right, you're gonna have to live with a little bit of background noise today. It's beautiful weather uh, to be doing yard work and there's just that, there's a bunch of people out doing yard work and there's uh, not a whole lot I can do about it. But anyway, um, the other part you're going to have to uh, kind of settle with is some of these camera angles are probably going to suck because uh, it's hard to get in here and do what I've got to do and film at the same time. So the camera's just kind of got to be off to the side. Anyway, um, those side notes, of those whatever you want to consider those anecdotes uh, aside, the I've got the steering shaft disconnected. It's just hanging down under the car now so that it's out of the way. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I've already pulled a couple of the bolts out of this little shift arm. Actually, it's just barely hanging in there still. Get that out of the way. And then we're gonna put the car into low gear all the way down where we had the problem before. That should be, yep, all the way down in low gear. And we're gonna find out how far down we can actually set the, all right, can you see what we're doing? Oh man, the camera did some wobbly. Um, uh, yeah, I think this this is right in the way, isn't it? Let's see, now, not really, hold on, hold on, hold on, I gotta find a spot that, that you can see what, what I'm doing. How about right there? Kind of, you can kind of see it, right? All right, hold on, one more time. There we go, now you can see. All right, so this is turned, it's all the way down in low gear, and I'm trying to find a position, I need to snip that zip tie, where this guy still has a, an angle where this rod can still, granted this is my, my shift rod, and I'm probably gonna have to put a bend in it, but for now we're just gonna eyeball it straight, and it looks like we can go right about, right in that region before we're gonna have a, an issue with getting behind the chassis support. And what I mean by that is this opening, this eyelet gets too far behind this plate, which my hand's blocking the light, but this reinforcement here on the frame rail or on the firewall, which picks up the front subframe, we gotta make sure we stay clear of that here to the inside so that uh, the rod still has somewhere to go. So it looks like this is as far down as we're gonna be able to go. Uh, let's find out how close we are to a, a bolt hole. It looks like right there. That comes up a little bit. Where's, what if we go the other way? That goes down too far. So we'll have to go right there. That's our closest bolt location. And then Go ahead and put a couple of the screws in to hold it in place. These screws are really small. I don't like them, but that's what we got. I'll have to make sure that these get Loctited. Get some Loctite on those when they, uh, once this is all sorted out so that they don't back off. tighten up and for now I'm just gonna put one in snug tight because now what I want to see is when we shift it all the way back up into park we want to see where this ends up up here and see if we still have a line of sight so let me throw the shift and all the way up that's where park is 
Oh yeah, that's that looks like it's going to work. Yeah, we still, ooh, man, we're gonna be close on the header. That's gonna be kind of weird. I wonder if we're gonna be able to clear the header. Well, let me get this zip tie snipped off of here and we'll bolt that on real quick and see if we're gonna clear the header. Don't worry, I'm coming right back. I'm not, I didn't go far, goodness. Um, I can't help it, we're, we're working alone today because the wifey's doing family stuff, which, oh crap. I knocked my screws down, there's one, two, I'm missing a screw already. Dang it, oh, I found it. It's all the way over underneath the oil pan. Um, the screw is under the oil pan, I know. For you, that probably doesn't really matter. For me, I'll be able to look back at this video when I forget where that screw is and I'll know. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, that's clipped. I need the bolt that's going to hold that on there. Yeah, grab this. I don't need these bushings. And what I do need is there we go. Let's see, perfect. All right. Um, again, I'm using. You know, temporary hardware at first. This did come with nylon lock nuts. Oh, I need a different washer. Um, which is definitely what you want to use for this because you don't want it falling off. That would not be ideal. There we go. That washer is going to have a little more room. And we got to run one on the other side. So, one thing when you're doing Working with heim joints, you want to make sure you use washers that aren't going to bind up your heim joint. So large, large washers aren't really a great idea. You want small flange washers. Perfect. That's exactly how I wanted that to go. Did you know that? Man, my hands are not working today. That's in. Now I'm gonna rely, I'm gonna have to rely on your eyes because I can't see this while I'm moving the shift lever. Oh, that's gonna be super close. Hopefully that'll pass. Find out. Are you watching? Ah, that went all the way to low gear. How close was it? I don't know. Let's, uh, let's go up to where it drives at. Right about there. Oh yeah, no, we're looking pretty good. We're looking good and drive, especially once that tight, I actually tighten that. Um, that's up around reverse. Ah. Uh, so in reverse, it hits. All right, um, we might be able to solve this with different hardware. Let me, let me give you a different angle so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. Now, right here where this bolt is, I think you can see that, yeah. Um, the head of the bolt is just Barely touching the header right now. So I almost think we might have to tweak it. Can I turn this from down here? Not really. It's on the detent. Um, hmm. Wonder if I actually tighten that up. Oof. No, it's gonna hit. And I really don't wanna ding the tube for this. Probably gonna have to brainstorm here a little bit. I don't know. Let me think about this for a minute and uh, let, me, let me brainstorm on this for a little bit and look at it and uh, I'll let you know what I come up with. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. 
Okay, so I went and did a little bit of digging and I have basically, I have two possible options that are gonna resolve this. One is definitely better than the other and neither I can execute without going to the hardware store. Um, but we can at least find out if it's gonna work. So the first option is a bolt like this, you know, header style bolt. That's got a smaller head on it. But the downside to that is that sticks out further. So I don't, I could stuff this in there, but I, I don't think that that's gonna work. Um, I think it's still gonna hit on the head there. So that's out. I forget about that option. I didn't look at that close enough. The other option, which I don't have a bolt the right diameter, um, I've got one smaller, but and I've got ones bigger, but of course I don't have one the right size, is to use a button head uh, screw. And this one's too small, but we'll go ahead and, uh, I don't have a nut for this. Son of a gun. Hold on guys. See if I have one in my, my junk drawer right here real quick. Uh, shuffle, 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 shuffle. Oh, wait, wait. Nope, too big. Almost. Kind of, but not really. By not really, I mean not at all. Um, another not at all. Alright, well, that's kind of a bummer. I don't have a nut handy to put on this bolt. Okay, this one will hold it in place. Sorry, I know that was kind of boring to just sit there and stare at that. Um, but, we'll, we'll at least look at what a kind of what a button head solution will look like in here. Take this hex bolt out. And then we are oh, definitely gonna need a washer so it doesn't just fall through. Yeah, see it's just too too small of a bolt. But it, it'll give us an idea at least. And uh, I'm gonna have to find a nut that's the right size that I can, that's the right thread. Otherwise it's just gonna do that. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get a nut that's the right size and then we can at least cinch this up to where it's gonna be close and then be able to look at if we're gonna clear the header with that. If we are, then I can move on to the next part of sorting out down below and figuring out if we need to put a bend in this rod. And I'll just have to come back with the right size bolt and replace this at some point before I do the final adjustment. Anyway, right back. Okay, I found a nut that will fit this bolt. So we'll do this again, put that in there. Put this guy back up here. I did also find a washer, that'll help. Kind of, not really. It is a little long. I wonder if that's gonna be a problem on the sweep against the firewall. Could always cut it, I guess. All right, that's gonna kinda, kinda stay in place. All right, let's see what that does. Um, this needs to be, oh, of course. I got it bound up. There we go. That needs to go on that side. All right. Let's see what shifting does. You drop down to like right there. Oh, perfect. That's going to work. We get the right size button head screw right there. That's going to clear the header. No problem. Oh, good deal. That makes me happy. Go all the way down to low gear. Yep. The length of that screw actually works, even though we can go shorter, which when I go and buy one, I will go probably one size shorter, but that's gonna work. One more problem solved. Now we gotta go work on the, the underside and get that set up and see if we gotta put a bend in this rod and get it cut to length. We might be able to column shift today. Hell yeah. All right, hey, what's up guys? We're down on the ground underneath the car and this is kind of a weird spot to work in because I'm trying to make sure you got light to see what I'm doing and that I can do what I'm doing and that I'm not blocking the camera. Anyway, um, 
the first thing you got to do is make sure the transmission's in park and because we're going to set everything from there so to make sure your trans a 700 r4 and it should be the same for your turbo 350s or your turbo 400s or 4 i know it's the same for 4l60s and uh 4l80s but basically you want to turn your shift knob off your transmission all the way clockwise and that'll be park so we go there we go that's as far clockwise as it's going to go and then we'll double check and make sure that that's as far as it goes by keeping it on the shift knob and we'll go one click that's reverse another click oh i think that was two hold on oh okay try again uh, and you want to double check this because if you set the linkage up wrong that's kind of a pain in the neck to redo it and you won't know it until you have a problem with it so one click there's reverse the next click is going to be neutral then on a 700 r4 it's overdrive and then drive or third and then second and then first that's all of our clicks and we can't go any further so then we go first second third slash drive overdrive neutral reverse and park okay so we're we're in park this little oops sorry i bumped the camera uh, this little billet lever is part of the shift kit shift linkage kit that i got and it's got a nice little knurled piece in it i don't know looking at what our angle is here i think that's actually not a bad place to start yeah there's some thunder going on outside we might see a storm today oh i keep bumping the camera i'm sorry um, and then this heim joint will get bolted there and we'll have to cut the rod down and based on this slot we'll have to marry that up with the positions of our um, you probably can't even see it but this slot this heim joint can go and you know be adjusted along the length of this slot and basically that changes how far it throws this lever each time you click it on the column so you kind of got to work both of those together to make sure that the position on the column matches up with what gear you're shifting into but for now i think this is where we want to start or do we want to go up a little bit higher because we could start up here let's oh i need to get an allen oh there we go um this little knurled piece is what has the the square cut in it or the the flat sides to match up with the output of the transmission and then this can be put on in various positions and locked in with a screw on the side of that and then it has a keeper that goes in the end of it which you probably can't see what i'm doing because my hand's in the way but you got a keeper nut that goes in the end and screws in and then on top of that you get a a jam bolt that you tighten in over the top of that pinches it all together and locks everything up so that that's all rock solid um granted it's still a little sloppy because i have to actually tighten it all up but from there we should yeah that would be where first gear is so first second third overdrive neutral and park i think that's oh no sorry neutral reverse and then park um i think that's where we want to set it up at is right there hopefully that's not too crazy of an angle for the heim joint yeah, it should be all right i think that'll work so now the heim joint this you take a, a bolt and it goes in the back side and that slot is keyed so you don't have to be able to get a wrench on the back of it the head of the bolt actually keys into the slot and can't rotate so you don't have to get a, a uh, i don't have hold on i gotta grab 
a nut. I don't have the right nut. Oh, goodness. There we go. All right, I'm back. I'm back. All right, so Heim joint. Got that on there. Oh, washer. This is where you use one of your small washers so you don't bind up your Heim joint. And then Heim on, then another small flange washer. And the kit comes with a nylock nut, which is what we'll end up changing this out to. But for now, I'm using a regular nut. See, that I can just hand tighten, but it comes with a nylock. Oh, excuse me, I got a cough. <coughs> I think the dust got in my throat. But there we go. That's just kind of hand tight. That's all hand tight. And then our heim joint will go point it up towards our column. Ooh, yeah, we're going to have to put a bend in the bar for that to be happy. Otherwise, it's going to bind up. But that, and I've got my adjusters all the way tightened up. So I have, I can lengthen it. And here's where I gotta decide. I can only cut this, if I cut this too short, then I'm, well, I got adjustment in it. It's got adjustable length in the heim and the sleeve has some adjustment. So I need to get a Sharpie and I can mark this. Um, I'm gonna cut it pretty much at the longest that I can keep it, because it's always easier to make it shorter than it is to make it longer. And then after it's cut, we'll put it together and see what we got and see how close we are to having a, uh, a functioning shifter, which if I'm gonna keep it long, I wanna shorten the throw, because that's gonna be a longer rod. Yeah. So we'll get this cut. And after it's cut, I'll uh, slap these two pieces together and show you what it's got, and we'll see how close it is to working. Yeah, something like that. So one of the things that's always interesting in Oklahoma is the weather. And uh, you know how just a little while ago I mentioned something about a possible storm? Look at the sky. Holy cow. The wind's picking up. I think it got a little bit of the flash. Um, and we got warnings that, uh, this storm might drop some large hail. And so, yeah, I'm going to, oh, I need to shorten the stick. Uh, I'm going to put my, pull my truck in so we don't have to, uh, potentially deal with an insurance claim for hail damage, but, oh, get that. There we go. Um. The wife just got home from lunch with her family. Yeah, and you saw how dark it is? It's uh, it's only 1.20 in the afternoon and uh, our sunlight has disappeared. On the upside, nobody's out doing yard work anymore. So it has quite and quiet down from that, you know, quite a bit. But I don't think I can quite get the truck in all the way, but at least most of it's in just the the tail end of the bed's out, which isn't as important. Uh, but yeah, you know, the the excitement that we deal with here in Oklahoma. And you should see those clouds move. Yeah, the clouds are ripping right now. I'll take my life into my own hands and walk out here where the hail could just start dropping. Uh, can you imagine that, getting whacked in the noggin? Whoa, whoa getting whacked in the noggin with a softball sized piece of hail that's, that'll kill you it'll kill you anyway um i'm gonna get i'll show you what I, where i'm at and uh then i'm gonna get back to finishing what i was doing so the the shift rod i cut about it's about six inches i didn't actually measure it um i just went where i sharpie marked it and uh i didn't kill the snake I found it that way. I think a bird did that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I cut about six inches off of there and I'm getting it fitted up. It's a tight fit in the, uh, the Heim joint coupler for the slip fit. So I'm 
working it back out because I couldn't get it all the way in and I'll uh, sand the end of it a little bit so that it'll actually fit in there good and we can seat that. And then I should be able to put this in the car and start working on getting it adjusted and figure out if we need a bend in it. Anyway, I'm gonna finish doing this. Uh, if the storm does something interesting, I will show you. Otherwise, we'll pick up with uh, getting that installed on the car. All right, so here's what I ended up with. Um, yeah, I, uh, a couple of times back and forth with the car, I got the length kind of sorted where it needed to be and then needed to add a couple of lazy bends, as you can see. And a little bit of a bend there and another little bend there. Um, both of these bends were added for uh, basically to get the heim joints out of a bind because the, well, you can't quite run a perfectly straight line. The two connection points aren't in the same plane, so the heim joints were a little too tweaked out of their alignment. Um, so yeah, this, I think what I've, my final result here, I think this is pretty close to what it needs to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thrown in the car, which I'll just take you along for a ride. It's pretty quick, but we gotta shorten the stick, which you have no clue other than I'm up here now instead of down there. Anyway, uh, let's see if I can get this positioned under here halfway decent so you can see and tweak and there we go. I think you can see it. Hopefully you can. Uh, and then we come up into here. This guy goes up this way. Yeah, and I'm sorry if my arms are getting up in the way. It's just what it is. That's not in park. There we go. Come on. There we go. Like that there. Then I throw the washer. And a nut. And then this end will be clamped up. I'm just going to put a little bit of a cinch on it for the purpose of testing it. There we go. And we go up to the other end, which is going to be much easier to see. All right. And this end, I got to get the hardware. Again, I still have the wrong size bolt, so this is gonna have a little bit better fit once I get the right bolt. Oh, that needs to be turned once or twice. Um, yeah, the right bolt will take the, uh, there's, there's a little slot, but it's all in this bolt up here right now. Get the length to where it's pretty close. That should be right in the right neighborhood. That goes in, put a washer on the back, and the little tiny nut. Again, uh, this bolt is temporary because it needs one that's the right size, but it will be a button head like this because that's what's needed to get by the header tube. There we go. That's snugged up. Uh, our rod clearance, I'll give you a look at that. You can Not too terrible. It's, uh, sorry if the camera did a weird tweaky thing right now. That was, it did, at least it did for me. Uh, but you can see where the lazy bends are, but it cleans up the, the angle of the heim here and same down there at the transmission side, the Heim's not nearly as bound up. So now let's uh, see if we can run it through the gears and see what happens. All right, we're going from park to reverse. One click from reverse to neutral, neutral to overdrive. Overdrive to third, and then second, and first. Yeah, buddy. And we should be all the way back up in park. And we are. Transmission, the, the, the arm on the transmission is all the way up in park. We 
officially on a column shift. So, column shifter is sorted out. I do need to go through and, uh, like I said, that one bolt's gotta be replaced and I need to go through all the, um, the jam nuts and whatnot and tighten all that, put Loctite where Loctite's needed, change regular nuts for nylocks where those are needed. Um, you know, just the tedious stuff that actually keeps it from falling apart is what I still gotta do, but it works. It's in there. It's on the column. Oh, I'll even show you from the column side. You know, why not? Um, maybe. Hold on, shrinking the camera down. Whoop. In the car we go. Yep. And. There it is, on the column. So, you're out the window. Um, it works. We can now get the, the floor shifter pulled out of the car. We're not gonna be using that. We're gonna be doing, definitely going with the column shift. It's gonna be a really clean setup. It'll make use of the column shift column that I put in the car with the intention of using it. That's a win. Um, yeah, I, I can't ask for a much better outcome than that for this part of the project. It's another step forward on the wagon which we'll be taking baby steps on as we continue to shift major our more time consuming efforts onto the race car but uh we're gonna try we're gonna try and get both of these cars going this summer um yeah it's a lot of work but uh it's also not a lot of work at the same time if we just keep chipping away at it and anyway that's gonna do it for this episode of me screwing around the uh the storm didn't drop any hail or destroy anything it just dropped a bunch of rain and made a bunch of noise and got a bunch of water in the shop but you know hey that's how it goes go on down there hit that like hit that subscribe see you guys on the next one